In this video, I'm going to start working on a commission. This one came about thanks to my uncle, who put my name forward to someone who wanted two custom desks built, one for each of his children. I got in touch and we discussed his requirements so that I could start designing the desks. He wanted the desks to have some shelves and a single drawer for storage, to be dismantleable so that they can be easily transported, mounted on wheels so that they can be easily moved around, and built to last. He mentioned not wanting anything made out of chipboard. I used SketchUp to design the desks and after making a few changes, here is the design that the client was happy with. To begin, I needed to pick up some 18mm Far Eastern hardwood plywood for the frame of the desks. And usually I go to my local timber merchant, but it was closed at the weekend, so I decided to check out a new DIY store that had opened recently close to me called Bunnings. I first spoke to them over the phone to check that they had what I wanted in stock, and they told me it was £36 per sheet, which I couldn't quite believe, because at my local timber merchant it's usually around £53 per sheet. But when I got there and started looking through the sheets they had, I found that it was not very good quality. I actually went through every sheet they had in the shop and picked the best sheets I could find, but I ended up having to buy twice as much material so that I could use the best bits of each sheet and cut away the bad bits. There were some areas where the veneer was so thin that you could see the layer below, and some really badly patched veneer areas too. Now I know that this isn't really furniture grade plywood anyway, but the cost of birch ply here in the UK is way too expensive, so Far Eastern is usually a good alternative. At least the stuff from my local timber merchants is anyway. The stuff from Bunnings, not so much. I started by making some of the cross cuts to get the plywood to a more manageable size in my small workshop. I used my circular saw for this and a straight edge to guide the cuts. I then made the rip cuts over at the table saw. These pieces I'm cutting here are for the shelving units that will make up the left hand side of the desks. And then I cut the side panels for the right hand side of the desks. I used my heat gun and an old chisel to easily peel off those nasty stickers. For the shelves of the desks, I'd use some oak kitchen worktop. And I'll be using this for the top of each of the desks too later on. I bought these worktop lengths online and had them delivered. This stuff is 27mm thick, 620mm wide, and I bought two lengths which were 2 meters long. I used my circular saw again to cut a couple of pieces roughly to length for the shelves and then made some rip cuts at the table saw and then I could make the accurate cuts to length at the mitre saw. The upper shelves would need to be cut shorter than the bottom shelves and to get the correct measurement for those I measured the thickness of two pieces of the plywood together and then adjusted the stop block on my mitre station by that amount before cutting them to length. I used my trim rotor to add a roundover to the long edges of the upper shelf. Later I'll add a roundover to the desktops too, and I thought it would be nice if the shelves matched the top. For the bottom shelves, I wanted the roundover to stop shy of the ends where they would meet the plywood side panels, so I marked up the thickness of the ply onto the oak, so that I knew where to stop. I then sanded the shelves to get rid of any burn marks left by the router and smooth everything over. I used a 120 grit paper for this. I used my block plane to ease over the hard corners of the bottom edges of the shelves. This will make the edges less prone to damage and nicer to touch too. To assemble the shelving part of the desks, I laid out the pieces on my workbench and I used some 5mm spacers to position the plywood side panels where I wanted them, because later I'll be adding a 5mm trim piece to cover the end grain of the plywood side panels. I added glue and then clamped on some plywood clamping squares to keep the two panels at 90 degrees. I got the idea for these clamping squares from a Peter Millard video, which I'll link to in the description box below. They're really handy and really easy to make too. 
As the bottom panel will later have casters added, I offered up one so I could figure out where I wanted to drill the holes. And then I drilled the pilot holes with a countersinking bit and added screws. I was happy to use screws here because they won't be visible down on the bottom. Then I checked that the upper shelf would fit and that looked fine. So then I marked up where I wanted to add some beach dowels to secure the shelves. Again I used clamping squares to help keep the shelf square. I added wood glue and used some parallel clamps to hold it in place once I was happy that it was sitting level. Then I could drill pilot holes, add glue to the dowels and hit them in place. I then used a Japanese pull saw to trim them flush with the side panels and sanded with some 120 grit. I then went hunting for some pieces of oak that I could use to trim the plywood edges of the side panels. I ripped the oak into 5mm thick strips. Then I ripped them to 18mm wide, which is the thickness of the plywood. I offered them up and marked them for length. and then cut them at the man saw. And then I could glue and clamp them in place. Eventually I ran out of clamps while I was clamping up the second one. So I moved the clamps from the first one over to the second one after the glue had had a bit of time to set. Fortunately it was a hot day so the glue was grabbing pretty quickly. I also needed to trim the plywood edges of the right hand side panel of the desk. So I found another piece of oak. This is the stuff I salvaged from a local church refurbishment a few months ago. And the wood had moved a bit since I brought it into the workshop with seasonal changes so I first needed to get a square and straight face on it. So I used my hand plane to get it nice and straight again and make sure the edges were at a perfect 90 degrees. I could then offer up the flat face to the rip fence on my table saw and rip some more 5mm thick pieces. As this piece of oak was quite thick, I made this cut in several passes, raising the blade each time as this wood is very hard and very dense. I used the hand plane again to straighten up the edges of the trim pieces and then I ripped them to 18mm in width. I used some oak wood filler to fill any small gaps between the panel and the trim. This stuff works really well. It was a pretty hot day and my cat had managed to find the only piece of shade in the garden to cool down. I needed to add a top panel to the shelving part of the desks, which would later be used to attach it to the desktop. So I measured up for length and found a plywood offcut that I could use. I marked up a center point on both the side panel and the piece of plywood and glued and clamped it in place with the marks lined up to make sure it was centered. And once the glue had set, I added dowels again to reinforce the top panel. I wanted to avoid sanding the plywood as I didn't want to risk sanding through the veneer. So I used a cabinet scraper instead to smooth everything over. And then I used the sander just to ease over the oak trim edges. For finish, I used boiled linseed oil. This raised the grain slightly so I did some gentle hand sanding with some 400 grit wet and dry paper to smooth everything over after the oil had dried. 
and then I applied a second coat of oil. Here I'm flushing up the trim pieces on the side panels with a block plane. Once it was very close to flush, I did some more scraping before oiling those in the same way. I could then add the casters to the bottom of the shelving side of the desk and I used some 15mm pan head screws for that after drilling pilot holes. So that's it for part one of the build, there's still plenty left to do. So if you enjoyed this please subscribe if you haven't already and check out part two. Thank you for watching.